very good afternoon to all as you all know that we celebrate nurses day on may 12th every year on the birth anniversary of florence nightingale this year it is even more special because who has declared 2020 as the year of the nurse and midwife first of all i'd like to wish all the nurses across the globe a very happy nurses day and i would welcome everyone to this panel before we start with the panel discussion we have with us dr navin nishal who's the founder chairman of voice of healthcare a non-profit organization to deliver a special address to all the nurses across the globe on this nurses day dr navin please thank you very much uh, uh, thank you uh, bobby captain usha benerji dr roy dr girish tyagi i have been meeting dr girish tyagi i'm sorry i i forgot to introduce dr navin dr navin is a founder of uh, voice of healthcare a no profit organization and he is also the founder of co-founder of signus hospitals a chain of 100 hospitals he led signus as director of operations and quality and exited in 2019 in 2018 dr nishal co-founded medo health a network of clinics the fastest growing outdoor care network dr nishal is a healthcare delivery expert from harvard business school usa dr nishal represents india as an ambassador to the european innovation academy he is actively involved in mentoring and building entrepreneurs in india and abroad He received his executive education from Inset France and University of Heidelberg, Germany. Dr. Navin, uh, thank you. Over to you for the special address. Thank you very much. Just one correction: uh, Signus is a chain of ten hospitals, not hundred. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, uh, happy Nurses Day to all the nurses on the panel and uh, all the nurses listening to me through this uh, uh, webinar, Facebook Live video. Uh, as far as i remember my first encounter my very first encounter with a nurse was a bit different and i remember i was in uh, third year of mbbs and my clinical classes had just started i didn't know uh, how i mean much about sterilization of ot i was trying to enter an ot and suddenly a senior nurse appeared and started scolding me and that's how i came to know that i can't enter an ot without proper precautions nevertheless i owe a lot of my clinical as well as procedural skills to nurses i remember when i finished my mbbs and i started my internship i learned my first intravenous cannulation from a senior nurse posted in surgery ward so i i owe a lot to uh, nursing community i think we need to give a lot more respect to nursing community for their significant contribution to healthcare thankfully world health organization has designated this year 2020 as year of the nurse and the midwife in honor of 200th birth anniversary of florence nightingale when who dedicated this year for nurses we never knew that we will be requiring all the more help from the nurses during this corona pandemic and they are the real front warriors taking care of each and every patient without any if and but i know a lot of nurses working with a simple surgical mask as well they are truly the unsung heroes 2020 is therefore much more than just another year for nursing this community needs to come forward and tell their stories loud and clear they need to talk about the tremendous odds they face every day you know we are facing uh, resource challenges as well in terms of nursing and this this will grow with time as well india has uh, 2.1 2.1 nurses per 1000 population if we go the absolute number which is 1.7 million nurses in india and as per who guidelines this is way less the demand of uh, nurses is all set to grow exponentially according to who 
there will be a shortfall of uh, 9 million nurses worldwide by 2030. In India only, there will be a demand of more than 4 million nurses by 2022 and 6 million by 2030. So uh, WHO has uh, its own agenda of 2020 and WHO is working on it. And I'm sure more and more people will join this profession and help India in achieving its target of uh, universal health care. So today is an op opportunity for all of us to say a big thank you, all the nursing heroes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to you, Bobby. Uh, thank you, Dr. Naveen, uh, for the wonderful message. And uh, I am indeed honored to welcome all the four eminent panelists. Uh, th though there were five ex eminent panelists in the beginning, uh, unfortunately, one of the panelists, Dr. Tarang, the CEO of uh, Reliance Hospital Mumbai, couldn't join at the last minute. Uh, so we, we are having presently four eminent panelists from across the country, and I'm delighted and honored to have them as part of the panel. Welcome you all once again. Also, I'd like to thank all the participants for registering with us and joining us on this Nurses Day. It's almost impossible to imagine a world without nurses. Be it birth or death, nurses work with people throughout their lifespan. Nurses and midwives play a very important role in community health, in illness prevention and health promotion. In the hospitals, while the doctor is in command, it is the nurses who executes the care plan, being with the patient 24 by 7. In spite of all these, they are called as the unsung heroes of healthcare. Why? Let us hear from the panelists. So the first panelist of the day is Dr. Roy K. George. Dr. Roy K. George, is presently the academic director at Baby Memorial Hospital, Calicut, Kerala, and also the national president of Trained Nurses Association of India. He has done his master's in nursing in psychiatric nursing and also has done his PhD. He has over 30 years of experience and one of the senior most professor in psychiatric nursing in Kerala and had been principal at various reputed nursing colleges in Kerala. He is the chief editor of Kerala Nursing Forum which is the first journal for nursing in Kerala. He has many publications in national and international journals and has ordered and has authored many professional uh, books as well. So over to Dr. Roy. So your perspectives on the topic, please. Thank you, Bobby, for that nice introduction. And good afternoon to all panelists. Good morning to Tara. She's joining us from New York. And yeah. uh, indeed, it is a pleasure to talk about Nursing and nurses on Nurses Day, especially of the Nurses Day of the International Year of Nurses. As they <clears throat> mentioned in the introduction, WHO have never imagined that uh, nursing will be celebrated in this way in 2020. We were all planning to have different mega celebrations and all that is gone with the COVID pandemic. But that also gave a reason for well to recognize, well and the common people to recognize the importance of nurses. That is something good because whatever extent of celebrations we must have held, this much message may not have gone to the public and the government, the authorities in health and every stakeholder in healthcare. More than anybody else now, now public is uh, celebrating nursing. But I'm afraid this, this celebrations also will end once the COVID comes under control and we will be back to square one. That shall not happen. As the director told, unsung heroes, especially in a developing country like India, nests are always, are almost always marginalized. As far as work and work pressure, stress, physical as well as mental stress in everyday work is concerned, we are no exception. But the remuneration, the respect, the dignity and recognition which we get is uh, much, much below the expected levels. That's why one of the reasons why most of our nurses want to migrate. So we have a big statistics about number of nurses in India. We are not sure how many of them are working in India. Thanks to the <clears throat> conditions in 
uh, Indian nursing or Indian healthcare scenario. But all the more, there are changes ha happening. There are serious discussion going on. There are changes, isolated changes coming from uh, every corner of the country, which we, might be, we have to make uh, more common and more widespread. That is a difficult task in a socio-political situation of a developing country like India, but we shall never lose hope. And as a professional association, we always get complaints, we always get uh, grievances from nurses around the country. Some of them we are able to address, some of them they are, we are able to at least uh, handle to a satisfactory level. And some places we are helpless because there is so, so much changes in system is required. In the current situation, like the COVID is a dreaded situation now, we have got a voice to talk about inadequacies in nursing. As the, and the program was introduced, we were saying nurses were uh, caring for patients with only one mask or with a surgical mask, you are saying. It was a condition in many places in the country. And as usual, though government was alert and government was uh, doing anything, but as usual, there was a lot of delays in getting necessary personal protective equipment. There was high concern about safety of nurses, safety of health workers, especially nurses. So while moving the state and the central governments for ensuring proper supply of personal protective equipment, as a professional organization, what would we do is at least to give the earliest supply to different corners of the country. It is not something we should be proud of, but this is some situation which was the situation in many places in the country because we were not prepared to combat a pandemic like COVID, even in the initial phase, when the number of cases were less, only you know, the news was spreading that is getting transmitted here and there, but still we, we had deficiency in supply. And even today, in the International Nurses Day, I got a report from Barambur, Odisha, that nurses are protest, protesting, making, making a public protest, uh, observing social distance, about a lack of adequate protective equipment. So this is one stage. In addition to all the other burdens and problems in nursing, when a pandemic like this comes, even the basic minimum personal protective equipments are not available. It is a very sad story. Of course, nurses are not drawing away away from the their task. They are doing it, but they need to be supported well. That is the current situation. Of course, about recognition they deserve, the uh, status they deserve, dignity they deserve, all these things are very important. And we should make these situations like this to highlight such issues and uh, get moving. Of course, nurses are also responsible for such plights, such plights because many times they are not employed enough. They don't project themselves. They don't show what they do. Such things happen. And uh, of course, uh, professional associations, individual nurses, nurse duties, upcoming duties, everybody has a role to play. Um, though at present, if you take the government sector, especially the government sector, the pay conditions are, salary conditions are comparably better. It is okay, at least for me. But, but the highest force in the government of India is lying vacant for the last four years. Advisor to government of India, nursing yeah. advisor to government of India. Since from 2016, it is vacant. And most of the big hospitals, even the capital city of Delhi, they don't have a chief nursing officer or adequate senior level post. Like in one hospital, they were saying out of 10 deputy nursing superintendents, only one post is filled. And this is not just taking post, it is the coordination of nursing care and ensuring uh, proper care for the patients as well as protection of nursing. So such situations are prevalent across the uh, country and there are things which have to be changed immediately or action has to be taken immediately at least in this phase of COVID because COVID is not going to end by two weeks or three weeks. We are sure that this time is, this difficult time is going to continue for some time. So we are trying to make use of this in a pressure or lobby for this at least these areas are so that we will have a better coordination there. In the private sector. Thank you, Dr. Roy. I'll get back to you again. Uh, so over
when we were students and uh, doing the internship and the house job we learned a lot from the our seniors as well as nurses i share one of the experience uh, after doing my mbbs final year when i started the internship it was the first day and i was assigned a 24 hour duty in the medicine ward in the mm -hmm. night one patient expired around 9 o'clock or so and at that time i was the intern that was i, I was the junior most person my immediate uh, senior that uh, that was the house surgeon had gone for the dinner pg was uh, senior resident uh, was not available and that one patient expires i got a call from the nurse that uh, such and such patient on such and such bed has expired because at that time it, it was my first day and of course at that time we were not not told about the communication skills which of course is the need of the hour and i was not aware then how to declare the death that particular nurse told me that uh, you, you have to declare at, at uh, such and such such and such such and such so that was my first experience in the medicine ward during my first first day duty and to declare the death and nurse help me in that way so nurse is the central of the delivery of the healthcare and it, it they, they are at the forefront of the war against covid at that at the moment all the world is uh, struggling with the pandemic of the covid including india and uh, as our previous speaker told about that nurses are facing a lot of problems like uh, ppe kit or nurse or uh, mask or uh, anything like that so they, they have to be given honor because they are uh, in the forefront forefront uh, the covid barriers uh, uh, are the medical profession good as doctors nurses policemen safai karmachari and whosoever is uh, in the forefront is uh, for uh, covid barriers and government and the society are recognizing their job first of all after many years or so at least the society is now recognizing but at the same time there are some issues the doctors nurses who those who are living in the societies if they are in the hospital society is stigmatizing them is a, Uh, some some doctors have been asked by the landlords to to vacate the premises because they think that they are the carrier of the corona so they such kind of things are still going on of course government is uh, act actively and uh, taking action against those persons also so for, for, uh, as uh, we, we are witnessing that uh, international nurses day today and florence nightingale said that nursing is one of the finest art and i had almost said that the finest of fine arts see the florence nightingale has said that it is the finest of the fine arts about the nursing so nursing is that is a health oriented profession as we all know 
nurses are of course all the time you can say 24 by 7 the nurses are available in the hospital in the wards in the clinics and the patient society is being benefited by their role and it is the toughest job nursing is not the easiest job it is the toughest job they are they are always on the foot they miss important events at home and seeing the troubled person of different categories at the hospital or the clinics and they 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 feel because the doctors uh, after uh, say doing the operation doctor is away and patient care is being taken by the nurses they they find all the bad relatives bad patients uh, difficult to handle but they handle them effectively to the satisfaction of the patient satisfaction of them relatives also a nurse dispenses comfort compassion and caring without even a prescription of course on a prescription of a doctor they dispense that uh, medicine and all but without the prescription also they are dispensing the care compassion and caring to the patients nurses are the backbone of the healthcare there, there, there is no doubt at all nurses are the backbone of the healthcare system someone you if you save one life you are a hero if you save 100 life then you are a nurse that means it is a saving 100 life is equivalent to a nurse because after if i save save one life i i i can be called a hero but i save if i save 100 life i can i should be called a nurse caring is the essence of nursing so at the, the, in this uh, era when the covid pandemic is there all the governments and the countries are struggling and we can say that doctors nurses are in spite of various inadequacies in the system are treating the patient going ahead with the patients and they are in the, in this time we have seen that most of the medical professionals including the nurses doctors and the other supporting staff are being infected because the some asymptomatic carriers are coming and nobody knows that uh, about the status if they have not, if they don't have symptom so they are being infected they are going into the quarantine they are away from the family for 14 to 28 days but still doing the job to the highest order we salute the nurses on this international nurses day and we hope the society government and other persons will recognize them and honor them or to bobby next panelist i would invite would be ms tara sajan i'd like to introduce ms tara sajan she is a graduate from college of nursing fmc pune and has over 24 years of experience in critical care education and administration she has done her masters in nursing in nursing leadership i think that is not there in our country uh, specialization and also an mba from grand canyon university in the us she is presently the director of nursing of psychiatric department of montefiore medical center us and uh, also the president of indian nursing association in uh, new york interestingly she is also a private pilot who has clocked 300 hours of flying so over to you ms tara for your perspectives on the topic uh, hi thank you bobby uh, good morning from new york and i know it's good evening for you all um first of all I, first of all i want to thank uh, all the organizers of the voice of healthcare for inviting me to be a speaker in this webinar a tribute to an unsung hero of your healthcare can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. okay yes. um 
the actually uh, the nurses uh, surely are the unsung heroes of today's covid world comes we all come in varieties like we we they have a level different level of training different specialties different acronym for their to describe their professions and one thing that we all have in common is uh, our aim is to make a life better for patient and for their families and uh, in many ways, our nurses are unsung heroes of healthcare. Uh, okay. Uh, of healthcare, quietly caring for these patients with the compassion and professionalism. Every day around the globe, we, uh, they perform the duties without fanfare. We are saving lives, bringing healing to the sick and ensuring the dignity for the dying. They are often among the first to step forward during the natural disasters and any emergency situations, and sometimes at our own personal risk. Now, in this midst of this world, uh, worldwide health crisis, the members of a medical community are being praised more than ever. People are in quarantine, are stepping out of their balconies, they are to cheer, to celebrate them. Nurses are heroes. And as well as the nurses do have their own uh, part of their sacrifice, what they're doing is then the work schedule, which is like more than 12 hours of shift per day. We miss our holidays to care of, with the family time and all those things have been sacrificed. And also we deserve so much more recognition than what they, we are getting. Now, amid the raging crisis of coronavirus sweeping the country, the duty of the nurses have expanded to a greater magnitude. They have done their best, work long shift, and even they are risking their life to protect the humanity for which we can never thank them enough. As a nurse, our attitude is naturally to do whatever it does, takes to provide high quality of care for patients with the laser focus on person-centered care. We may not even recognize when we are not in innovative in solving a problem or in improving a quality of care. Of course, the story of our nursing heroisms are worth of recognizing a year around. For weeks now, we have been running into reports of heartbreaking COVID-19 deaths among the healthcare workers, especially the nurses. Out here, the CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, over 15 to 20,000 frontline healthcare providers have contacted the COVID-19. And uh, until today, we have almost 45 of nurses have reported death in the United States. Uh, Medical centers around the country, they have blamed the shortage of PPE for the healthcare workers, making them all more susceptible to this virus. Needless to say, the unsung health heroes are brave that too reminded firm in their duty. <clears throat> I think there are few reasons why we think we are needed to be considered heroes. Now, nurses regularly save their other healthcare professionals when things going get tough. Now, as uh, doctor was uh, mentioning, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Girish was mentioning about as how he was uh, in the first day of his duty, like how he was uh, able, means finding it difficult to cope up with the communication of a death. Similarly, like nurses, uh, almost every doctor out there have, will have such stories to say from the years in practice, how experienced nurse saved the day for them at some point of time in their career. And also nurses, they take abuse and maintain the professionalism. Their patients and their family members, as well as our hospital staff are frequently, we are on the edge. And when the temper flares in the yeah, hospital, the <clears throat> Uh, the nurses, we who spend the most time with the patient frequently serve as, serve as a proverbial and often being assaulted or being verbally abused by the family members. And we all, this is the funniest thing is where it was mentioned, the nurses do all the dirty work than any other healthcare will, don't. It is actually nothing pretty or glamorous about much of the work which we perform in a typical in a hospital settings. 
throughout a shift, countless tasks that needs to be completed that would have curdled our stomachs of any but most hardened individual. But in fact, I am constantly amazed how gentle and kind are nurses with the patient whose illness requires such unpalatable cares. We all, the nurses also work some grueling hours. The nurses also get to know their patient better than even the doctor can. The nurses are educated, educated professional with unique skill sets. And <clears throat> the nurses requires an extensive knowledge base. And in today's hospital, all nurses are required to have either a college or a university degree in their field. Additionally, the nurses are proficient in very wide array of sk uh, clinical skill that are absolutely essential for the patient's care. And so next time when you or a family member are sick and end up in the hospital, remember who, are, who the unsung heroes of the departments are and thank them for all that they go through and all that they do. I promise they will appreciate it deeply. And as the, I just wanted to wind up with one small quote from Mary Maya Angelou. You might be aware of, uh, familiar with her. As a nurse, we have the opportunity to heal the heart, the mind, the soul, and body of our patients, their families and ourselves. They may not remember your name, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. Thank you. Back to Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Ms. Tara, for the lovely quote by uh, Mary, Maya, Maya, Angela. Maya Angela, yeah. Okay. And also your views on the topic. Now over to Captain Usha Banerjee, the Group Director Nursing of Apollo Hospitals Group. Captain Usha Banerjee is an alumni of College of Nursing FMC Pune with over 30 years of experience. And while in college, she was bestowed with President's Medal, Army Headquarters Medal, and many other medals for academic excellence and for, and for being the first rank holder and all round outstanding student. She has also done MBA in HR, Diploma in Hospital Admin Training Development, Quality, and Six Sigma. She has vast experience as a group head of nursing in corporate hospitals like Manipal and Max Healthcare. She is also a core member of FIKI, CII, Healthcare Skill Sector Council, etc. And she is a recipient of various awards as well. Over to you, Ms. Usha Banerjee, for your views, please. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, and thank you to the organizers of the Voice of Healthcare and my co-panelists, all eminent, very distinguished people. Wonderful to be uh, seated along with you. It's a very busy day. It's the nurses' day. So I'm sorry I'm not sitting in my room. I'm just running around and talking to uh, this webcast from somebody else's room, so do pardon for uh, the backdrop. However, today is Nurses' Day and I wish the entire nursing workforce of our country and of course various countries a very happy Nurses' Day. The history of nursing is like an epic involving service and sacrifice, trials, triumphs, achievements, ambitions and aspirations. 2020 is declared as the year of the nurse and while we were all embracing to celebrate this grand theme, we got engulfed in the aftermath and the COVID war that we have been engulfed with. For me, I would say that it is like as if Florence Nightingale is walking the earth today. It is like the repeat of the Crimean War. And I know for sure that the nurses will rise like a phoenix from the ashes. The spotlight is already turned on and it is turned on, at least in my country, where people think that we are unsung heroes. The spotlight has been turned on by the prime minister and we witness the glory that comes by. Our spirits are sky high and this has happened once we've seen the fly past from the north to the south to the east and west by the helicopters showering flowers of glory. And I know it's for the entire healthcare workers, but we also know that largely there are nurses involved in, in that glory. 
we all know that nurses matter to clinical outcomes. They matter to the reputation of the organization. They matter to the reimbursement of the organization. And I say that they matter to the clinical practice of every doctor. And I'm proud to say that we matter. From unsung heroes, it's important to become the actual heroes. And it's also important to become the heartbeat of the healthcare ecosystem. And for me, being a diehard optimist person, I believe that I'm not an unsung hero. I am a hero. And that's how I want every nurse to believe. And the day nurses believe they are not an unsung hero, they will become the true warrior and the true person who is so important in the healthcare system. And I think it's important for every nurse to play that big, big role in creating this radical transformation from this unsung hero to becoming the true heartbeat of the healthcare system. And I feel there is a deafening call in order to create a cultural transformation, not just by the nurse, but the entire recipients of care, be it the patient, the community, the doctors, and everyone who works along with the nurse. And the nurse has to truly become the advocate of the healthcare system. I think it's important for nurses to mitigate this weakness and shift from its conservative command and control to enable and empower style of leadership, which will truly change the perspective of the young generation that is stepping into the healthcare system who are very knowledgeable, savvy, and have a better reach than what we did probably when we stepped into the profession. And for me, I understand that silence is fatal. It's time to speak up. And everybody has to navigate through the change that lies ahead of us. There will be a lot of challenges. Every profession has gone through this evolution of a revolution. And we are seeing and witnessing this change that is staring and glaring at us. And I know that soon everybody would realize that nursing is an independent yet interdependent profession. And I'm glad today we are talking about being at the front of the battle as frontliners, as heroes. And I'm sure this should not fade away in just these few weeks that we are seated here. Even after this pandemic is over, we must rise, we must rise, we must speak, we must make ourselves feel important and visible. And I think that entirely lies in the hands of the nursing fraternity. Yes, Bobby, that's my intro for today. Thank you, Captain Usha Banerjee for those motivating words and your perspectives on uh, the, true, the unsung heroes of healthcare. Yes, nurses are the real life heroes. Uh, now, as Captain Usha Banerjee has already mentioned about the need for cultural transformation, my next question uh, would be to Dr. Girish Tyagi. Uh, Dr. Tyagi, there is always the nurses and the doctors are interdependent on each other. And in our country, though in many hospitals, they have a good connect and they work as a team together. Whereas in many other places, there is a lot of disparity and there is disconnect and there's always a feel that doctors have to give the orders and nurses have to follow the instructions. So how can the collaboration between the doctors and nurses can be made better for better working environment and also for better patient outcomes? Over to you, Dr. Tyagi, please. Yeah. First of all, Bobby, as uh, you already told that it is a teamwork. Taking care of the patient by a team including the doctors, nurse, supporting staff, maybe the OT, OT people, other nursing orderly people, is a teamwork. And there should not be any conflict of interest between any two individuals. Also. And nowadays, you, you told that doctors are uh, ordering and the nurses, they, now the situation is not like that. In today's era, the situation is not like that. It is a teamwork. And doctors, of course, one thing is there, that communication system between the Two should be better. Doc, whatever the doctor is prescribing or advising, nurse should follow, and whatever the nurse is telling, doctor should also. Because the nurse with a patient, nurse spent most of the time. The, any problem with the patient is first bring to the notice of that said nurse on the duty. That nurse 
then communicate with the doctor then doctor advises certain things and that has to be followed and in sometimes it is seen that it is seen and of course it is being practiced also and it is uh, uh, our uh, culture also that in some happening occur nurse has to see his see his uh, say the, uh, use his brain and sometimes it is it is at the moment he has to she he or she has to take decisions and these decisions are in the good spirit and the in the patient interest only so in the uh, first thing is that doctors and nurse and the other team should think and should see that they are working in a team the teamwork should be there not that the individual approach there that nobody is superior nobody is inferior first of all Doc doctors are doing their duty nurses are doing their duty other nursing orderly or nurse, uh, other staff is also doing their duty and that is for the betterment of the patient betterment of that society ji yeah bobby uh, one more question i have for you in yeah. the healthcare policies or in decision makings most of the times nurses are not involved what is your opinion and views on this in policy making or decision making nurse leaders involvement yeah yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is uh, now changing nowadays uh, so, so, so regarding that nursing care when of course they are uh, nursing the ans or dns are with the best person to guide the various authorities and so, some uh, some decision has to be taken by the doctors so but of course as you said that some teamwork should be there there should be combined decision making and of course that in the times to come there will be a change in scenario when there are when the whole team doctor nurse will take a decision in the best interest of the patient and of course the doctors are being guided by the nurse only no no, no not not by any other field any other person so things are going to be changed and of course it should change thank you so much dr tyagi uh, that you mentioned that things will change even in healthcare policy decisions nurses will be involved in future and uh, you mentioned that communication is very important for uh, the, uh, better teamwork among the doctors and nurses and better collaboration and nurses have to use their critical thinking skills all the nurses out there please uh, take this message home and uh, now over to ms thara Ms. Thara, could you please just share the scope of services in the U.S.? You have worked in India, in Dubai, as well as in the U.S. The scope of services for the new nurses in the U.S. compared to India. So, how that can be better in India in future? Even your specialization in nursing is nursing leadership. We don't have such specialization in our country. So, could you please share with us? And I would request all the panelists. Uh, to add to a timing of 4 minutes and uh, bear with me for the technical glitches which have been happening all this while and now it is stable thank you for that can you hear me now yes okay uh, hi i worked in uh, india in the army for 4 uh, years and thereafter i worked in us i didn't work in dubai as an uh, rn there and um my experience from india and when i came over to united states it was like a pretty for me it was a shock a cultural shock uh, in the field of nursing itself like what we seen and what we practice what was there in india is not at all what we are here we are here we nurses had uh we were a decision making we played a key role in decision makings and also in the patient care we were a part of the team which was included i see that i do not know how far we have advanced in india now but i see there are changes taking place but i think we have to advance further in out in nursing aspect in india out here like as we said uh, nurses play a key role very much of a key role and uh, in when we do have a team meeting it's the nurse nurses have their say in part of the patient care the prognosis that uh, their uh, treatments and everything because most of the time the doctors are there only just for few 
min, uh, means might be a couple of, uh, um, not even hours, might be a few minutes or there, they just come visit and go. And basically it's all the assessments, all the need, the cares are all being taken care of by the frontline, the nurses. And uh, from the leadership point of view, um, the nurse leaders are very, uh, uh, like we can say, very predominant. And we are able to raise uh, our needs and meet our needs. And uh, <clears throat> we are being, uh, our voices are heard in major decision makings. Even if in a departmental uh, thing, uh, we are not being dictated, like we thought us being included in a major decisions that is being taken. We are being a part of it. And because we know as a frontline staff, what do they need to take care of the patient in a way they needed to be taken care. So whatever we bring it to the table is being discussed and it's being accepted and implemented. And as uh, the nurses, we out here, the opportunities are very, very much wide, vast. We are available where you can expand your career in various aspects. Like uh, it's uh, opportunities are plenty. And I think we India is also, we are also heading in the same directions. We are, what are the, having- uh, What are the other yeah. scope of services compared to the regular scope of services in India for uh, nurses? For nurse, but now we do have the I, nurse practitioners are there, like all the advanced nurse practitioners, uh, APRNs, like advanced uh, nurse uh, nurses practice, advanced practice, um, practice nurses are available with their uh, in the specialized field in anesthesia, where we have in all the specialties like uh, labor and delivery, psychiatry, med surge, family practice, pediatrics, all those fields, we have the specialties. And once you are able to, we are able to practice, uh, we are able to prescribe and we are able to take care of the patients. We can have our own independent practice too. So that is one of the major change and shift which is coming in because most of the hospitals now, they, I think they prefer to have nurse practitioners rather than a PA who is a physician assistant. And uh, because it's a little bit money wise, they say there is a budget wise, it's a much more, little more feasible for them. And nurses also, you know, we are like, we are hands-on with the patients. So that is most, and even the patients, sometimes when you give a choice, they, you want a PA, if they, then we have a doctor, but then if you have a PA and a nurse practitioner who is covering for the doctor, most of the time the patients prefer the nurse practitioners because of their uh, in the, in, on, um, on hands available and their personal touch with the patient. Thank you so much. Next question to you would be, why mental health is so important uh, for nurses? And it is normally a neglected area, mental health and resilience. Could you please elaborate on that? Okay, uh, as such, like if you see, um, this is one of the um, important where everybody ignores even in our normal human life, when you are looking at, we give more importance for our physical health. When it comes to our mental health, we always slack on it. We never take care of it. Unless we end up to a crisis status that then uh, help is sorted out. So especially in this, during this COVID season, like we are being facing with the nurses that who are undergoing, facing all these uh, treating care, taking care of these patients, most of the time, like a lot of death is happening and the nurses sometimes are helpless and that has affected their mental health. And in the war front, for example, if you go into a war front and then when you return back, what happens is the person is traumatized psychologically and that is impairing him from functioning further. The similar situation can happen if we are not going to take care of the nurses psychological factors. If we are not going to deal with those factors now and provide sufficient help for them, we might end up with the same sort of situation what an army personnel is facing coming back from the war. That is what we say like out here in New York, we have now started the helplines 
and also the organized various health organizations have started support groups and available and in my hospital also we have some care centers opened up for the nurses or for the healthcare personnel they can go and have the support which is very much important to function in the full capacity when when this episode is done i do not know how many of the nurses will be able to function at the same level of what they were before it's very very important that the mental health is also being taken care of as, as equal to the physical health thank you so much uh, ms tara for sharing the scope of services of nursing in the us and also about uh, the importance of mental health for nurses now over to captain usha banerji i have three questions for you why are nurses not working in india despite the fact that india has a glaring shortage of nurses what can be done to improve their working condition and what are the career prospects for nurses especially post covid well that's a question i which has always intrigued me why are nurses leaving india now if you look at my own career i've stayed 30 years in this country despite having a lot of good accolades and i i'm a true soldier and i would never leave india probably i i would retire here and i would die here and i also know that i would be remembered here and i've always tried to motivate very young nurses to stay back because this country needs people who are trained here and who would make a significant impact in the healthcare system i understand there are challenges and i'm sure the challenges were much more when we began as young nurses and at every step we are trying to do the best that we can for the next generations to come uh, we may not go by as legends but definitely as significant contributors to the healthcare system so honestly i uh, i really wouldn't be able to answer this question maybe it's money maybe it's uh, glamour glitz a better quality of life but uh, having been at the helm of affairs of most of the big conglomerates and i work for apollo and i lead 73 hospitals today and there's immense pride i bring in uh, of being a nurse advocate and a nurse administrator uh, you know all that we spoke about policy decision and bobby you know it you've been with me and you've been in the healthcare system with us uh, definitely i feel the future is very very good and if nurses stay back in this country things will change and and we know uh, dr roy is sitting here uh, the tna is fighting for the cause of nurses so i really really wish uh, i know that my counterparts have done well we've got nurse administrators and aesthetics and all that ms tara just spoke about but definitely i i see a great future for nurses so do stay back i i really wouldn't be able to answer why do you go away i, I don't find any need i've never felt that myself and i i i am a living example to post covid i definitely feel uh there will be visibility as i mentioned in my you know in uh, initial talk and and it is the time it is the time where nurses are being recognized so capitalize on this moment and become from the unsung heroes to becoming the true heroes the world is around you today uh you cannot be sitting on one corner and expect the world to celebrate you you have to step out you need to showcase your stories social media should be live with what you do and uh, i think just use this uh, opportunity or rather i say exploit this opportunity in the right manner and i am sure the recognitions will come it doesn't happen overnight uh i think it's time we have arrived just celebrate could you please uh, tell me what are the various uh, activities you carry out in your organization for recognizing your nurses well i think the most important thing is that if you look at uh, the apollo logo it's the nurse and this was envisioned 36 years ago by padma vibhushan dr pratap c reddy who is a chairman and that takes immense pride i think we just have to make the logo come, come alive and this is to the largest healthcare provider in 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 this part of the world uh, we do a lot of things and i'm sure there are some of the apollo nurses who are listening to me here and i i stand testimony to what i say and i say it with great conviction 
there are lots of things i think for us the nurse is very very important i know that you know there's always need to pay them better and look after them better but welfare is is prime for us every nurse is important so uh, we invest in their training in their education in their growth uh, understanding their needs and we are jci certified so we have very good standards of care uh, we have appreciations from patients we have appreciations recognitions rewards that go in we do a lot of work around their physical mental health and emotional health we facilitate a lot of things around the nurses uh, life and i think uh, we actually celebrate them and there's so much more to do i don't say that we've done all but definitely a lot of thing goes into i've never heard the management say no to what i asked them so i feel very very honored that uh, they are a part of my life and we are part of them thank you captain usha banerji for that positive note and it is nice to know that logo of apollo is Uh, you know a nurse with the torch and it is indeed a recognition of the nurses and good to know that the welfare is well taken care of uh, by the staff in of the staff in your institution so the last round uh, the last panelist for the second round is dr roy uh, my question to you would be what are the welfare activities carried out for nurses by tnai and what is being done by indian nursing council for bridging the gap in curriculum to clinical practice Okay, the two questions. First is uh, about welfare activities. Uh, TNA actually is uh, routinely doing finance, uh, giving financial help for higher education, scholarships for nurses, because there are a lot of nurses who uh, want to do uh, studies and there is financial constraints which makes them not doing it. So the scholarships are being given. They are giving welfare grants to people who are not able to work. The many nurses around the country who are not getting a pension having financial difficulty uh, uh, not working and having a physical problems like um, many types of illness from uh, kidney failure to many other things we are giving grants and of course from last two years we are giving critical care assistance critical medical conditions or critical illness we are giving assistance which uh, we have through the this is our 100 12 years or organization we have funds uh, thank to our members and we are able to mobilize such grants for nurses and any special occasions like uh, just two days back there was a few nurses who were stranded in delhi because they are staying from major hospitals in march lockdown came and they are not able to go back uh, to south india mostly from kerala and tamil nadu so we we got no hesitation in supporting them and uh, sending them back back by, by the time the government announced the train so they don't want to have a bus journey so such things are happening depending upon situation the regular things are uh, welfare grants and scholarships of course now uh, this year though it is little um, contrary to the tna's uh, aim our main aim is to uh, <clears throat> promote welfare of nurses in india but a uh, few years back there was a lot of exploitation of uh, recruiting nurses to outside the country and uh, the government asked us why don't you do it and now we are doing it for uk because it's on a global learners program which is and learn and retain we are just helping nurses who are the, we are not promoting nurses to go outside india but those nurses who want to go out we help them to uh, go with through the easier route because tna has a arrangement with the uk government their global learners program and uh, we are sending it. such things we are taking up because we are not uh, very <clears throat> rigid in our things whatever nurses whatever way we can help them we are helping then Thank about, you, about uh, nursing council like the new syllabus uh, for the graduate program is coming up and most probably i don't think uh, the, the consequence of covid will not affect because uh, we are going to st uh, stop the diploma and gnm program with uh, this year's admission 2020 admission will be the last admission hopefully for general nursing because our nurses are facing difficulties Uh, due to this the small difference between diploma and degree and uh, uh, their employment opportunities their high studies so we'll uh, as per ministry decision it is going to be stopped with the this year's admission that so we'll have only one entry that will be something a historic change in the uh, pattern of nursing education in india and about bridging the gap we are going for competency based learning and the routine didactic lectures and things like that more simulation more problem based learning that is in the final stages most probably Uh, we will be able to implement it from 
next year. They had plans in uh, the INC had plans to implement it from this year, but uh, I think so many meetings were cancelled, so many reviews were cancelled, and there are things, uh, other priorities for ministry as well as in the nursing council, but maybe by 2021. Of course, quality of nursing education across India varies. There are very good institutions. The above average are this. Uniformity has to be bring, bring out in the quality. That is a tough task, but definitely things are changing. And India has a unique pattern in which throughout the country, one uniform syllabus is being followed by students. Early it was not that, because the nursing syllabus is now all universities are mandatorily follow it. And that is something which is unique to India. In many countries, state to state or province to province, there are a lot of differences. The university, university, there is difference. So that we are consolidating by competency-based learning. And of course, there are, you know, Tara Sajan and uh, um, was mentioning about nurse, nurse practitioners. Nurse practitioners also have already started. But uh, you know, uh, with apolog due apologies to the uh, medical fraternity, we have opposition from the medical fraternity in India, especially from IMA in starting nurse practitioner course in many institutions. Though few institutions have started, we are not able to uh, start it as uh, required. But it, uh, the, but ministry is uh, <clears throat> strong on it. They want to start the nurse practitioner course in uh, critical areas as well as in primary health care and family practice, and also to post community health officers in every wellness centers. There are 1.5 1, 1 lakh of community wellness centers after the Aishman Barrel scheme. They want at least one nurse, BSA nurse, with a bridge course asked to look after the wellness centers. So because they feel it is better than uh, to have Irish people or from your people to be manage a modern uh, <clears throat> medicine center, a wellness center can be better managed by a nurse. These are things. So the, that has been integrated into the BSA nursing syllabus now, the current syllabus itself. So these are things which is being done now. Thank you, Dr. Roy, uh, for uh, letting us know that the syllabus for the st students will be changed soon and it will be more on competency-based uh, learning, which is the need of the hour. And with this, we come to the third round of the session. And due to lack of time, all the panelists, I would request to take one minute to give a takeaway message for the audience. So I'd like to start from Ms. Tara Shajan. Can't hear. Can hear? And Can hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I actually uh, owe myself to my training back in India in FMC. I think uh, the training what we had got from our base is uh, very, very evident that most of the Indian nurses who are doing well here is because of our training. If we are able to tap all the nurses out there, I think India can progress to a greater extent than what we are doing out here. I think we have great opportunity, great venue. Only thing is we have to have some sort of a direction. And if we do it, I think we have wonderful training and wonderful nurses in that we will be able to excel. So I think uh, if uh, if we are able to, there are great leaders like Ms. Cam, Ms. Usha and Roy, and Dr. Roy and everybody, like if you're all able to lead it and uh, bring forth the, the, the vision for the future, I think we can do well. And uh, do, um, I think like, uh, as such, like we have to use our skill to service one's need. We have to be having empathy in ourselves. And also we have to live in the present, but we have to at the same time focus for the future. And also we have to be able to adapt to the changes. And thank you, uh, Ms. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tara. Over to Dr. Tyagi, please. Yeah, my message to the budding nurses and those who are uh, those who will be taking the nursing as a profession, I, I will just invert the A, B, C, D, E. A is the available because the first uh, contact with the patient is nurses. So if the nurse is available and he's listening, she, he or she is listening to, to the patient, and of course, the, then attention to the detail. That means he det she should be detail oriented. Then P is the behavior. The behavior, of course, if our behavior is good, then half the problem is over with the patient from the illness point of view. Then there are three C's. C, one C is caring, compassionate, communicating skills, communicating, 
communicating skills should be exceptional communicating skills skills then desire to keep learning because nowadays of course uh, there are uh, scope of learning is there scope of same is there for the various nursing students and nurse practitioner also so desire to keep learning diligence never ending diligence should be there for the nurse in the, in the nursing profession then documentation documentation is very very important because nowadays at delhi medical council we are dealing with the complaints of, against the doctors or the hospitals where, where the records are being asked by the hospitals and we sometimes it is seen that there the discrepancy between the doctor's record and the nursing record and we gave importance to the nurses record so documentation is very very important whatever you is doing should be documented in the records also then e is the most important that is empathy empathy towards a patient should be maximum this is my carry on message to the all the nursing students budding nurses and of course who are uh, at the moment is listening to the this, this uh, symposium thank you bobby thank you dr tyagi over to captain usha banerji please well for me what i understand is it's the era of the nurse and it's time to celebrate and i think each one of us should be set out with a compelling conviction an obsessive optimism a passionate perseverance and we must be set out to invent the future and this cannot happen by one single nurse it has to be a collective force that reckons and makes the impact we must shape the environment and for me what i request from all the nurses and my leadership is that we become clinically competent we become socially sensitive we become ethically engaged we strive for safety we have a quest for quality and we work absolutely without fear or favor and i always say this that fanush bankar hawa jiski hifazat kare wo shamma kya bujhe jisko khuda roshan kare so we are god's angels we will strive for what we deserve and i'm sure it will happen and for me for all the leaders i think it's important for you to understand that idealized influence intellectual stimulation individual consideration and inspirational motivation is very important and may god give me the wisdom to lead the advice to follow the humility to celebrate my success and the inspiration to aspire for more great work from all the nurses across the country happy nurses day thank you captain usha banerji for the lovely message over to dr roy please yeah first of all uh, what i want to say is uh, dna is for change we are on a mission of changing dna because it has been quite traditional over the years we had the you know colonial um, style of functioning because it was uh, founded by the <clears throat> british nurses and things like that so we are first key word is change in dna activities to be more proactive more um more oriented towards the development of nurses from grassroots and try to like there are, there was uh, situations where tna was on one side and nurses trade unions were other side, on other side we are trying to bridge the gap because we worked into the trade unions are in need of our because they we need collective bargaining in each section so that is private hospitals or government hospitals or state government so we are trying to change tna to change nursing also because this has to go together nursing has changed and nursing is changing tna has to change that is so we need support of nurses and all the members to change tna and change nursing second and secondly of course we always say that we are not angels we are human beings with aspirations need for achievement and desires and dreams and we we are, we are ordinary human beings like any any other profession and a lot of angel calling is not desirable we want our things to be done because we are a professionals we are trained people we are human beings so that way we want to be more humane to us and we want us be human, we are humane to the people in care so this is there is there is demands there is not only just services we have demands and we will support any just demands of nurses anywhere across the country like when we supplied personal protective equipment somebody asked whether kna can do it i told we have to because this is need of the hour when we when the nurses are protected because they are the largest community out there in the war and they are 24 into 7 compared to a doctor or any other medical professional this too much time they spend with the patient and they need to be protected and we have to it is not just uh, just uh, preaching on the ground because we have to so that that, that way we are trying to change the talk and their outlook of the uh, professional organization how it can be helpful for nurses what is the need of the time and changing the times we need support of all nurses for that 
times, then definitely we will be able to go ahead. For Thank you, Dr. Roy. Thank you, Dr. Roy, for the inspiring message. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the panelists for all these informative, inspiring thoughts on nursing. As everyone said, nursing is very compassionate and nurses have to be passionate and they need to strive for safety, as Captain Usha Banerjee said, especially in this time of COVID. Nursing is not a nine to five job. It is a strenuous job and it requires a lot of time dedicated to time away from families with aching feet, sore muscles, not having time for social activities, not to mention cold meals, not having tea breaks or pee breaks. With all these, I'm sure that nurses are the real life superheroes, especially during the time of pandemics or beat pandemic or not during pandemic. Always they are central and integral part to the healthcare. Hence, our nurses are the real life superheroes and they need to be celebrated not one day, one week, but they need to be recognized and celebrated throughout the year. Governments and policymakers need to take necessary action to invest in nursing. There's an urgent need to ensure effective strategies that promote recruitment, retention and sustainability of nurses to meet the healthcare needs of our country and to address the issues of scarcity. I'd like to take this opportunity to salute all the nurse warriors who are at the front line. And also I'd like to thank all the parents who have sent their kids to this noble profession and all those families of nurses who stand by them and support them. I'd like to thank once again the expert panelists for taking the time of, the busy of their busy schedule and for being part of the panel. And I'd like to thank all the pa participants for registering for this webinar. A special thanks to Voice of Healthcare for organizing this webinar on Nurses Day and also for inviting us to be part of the panel. Thank you all so much. Namaste. Now over to the audience. If they have any questions, uh, they can uh, just ask. And I, uh, due to lack of time, we will connect with them over the link provided. They can contact any one of us. Just one question, uh, which I would like to ask uh, Ms. Thara uh, Rajan and Captain Usha Banerjee. Uh, one of the panelists had asked, our panelists are talking about specialized nurses in India. Can this authorization be given to nurses, for example, anesthesia nurse? IT nurse, etc. Captain Usha Banerjee, what are your views on that? Well, uh, in my opinion, uh, I think any amount of specialization that nurses can undertake will only benefit the larger uh, interest of the healthcare system because medicine is not generalistic anymore. And it is important that nurses grow up to specialize and super specialize because one nurse cannot meet the needs of every specialty. And I think there is growing interest in this arena. And I for sure would see a great future that we would have probably nurses who are specialized in oncology, pediatrics, neurology, and become super specialists and work along with the doctors and undertake very, very significant clinical work, which is very innovative and which is benchmarked. And we will get that route. And I think for that, what's most important is for nurses to stay back in this country because the average length of stay of a nurse in this country is significantly very, very short. Thus creating super specialists become a very So, but however, I uh, believe that uh, for the specializations, there have to be takers and the Indian Nursing Council has to promote. We have a lot of specialization courses in India. However, nurses opt only for a PG or a UG in nursing. There are specialization courses with regard to operation theater nursing, oncology nursing, pediatric psychiatry, every specialization there are one year courses. There has to be more takers. Indian Nursing Council should revise the curriculum based on the competency and there has to be some approval and also branding, some amount of branding given uh, to these courses so that nurses uh, will feel the necessity and the hospitals also will encourage nurses to take uh, these specialization courses, which the doctors too would approve and definitely uh, it can address uh, the attrition part to a certain extent because if every department has specialized nurses uh, for that area, definitely doctors also would want to have their specialized nurses for that area. I'm sure Dr. Tyagi would agree to that.
I'm sure Dr. Uh, Dr. Tyagi couldn't hear you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I endorse your view. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot once again for everyone to join the panel and uh, uh, sorry for all the technical glitches which happened during the initial phase of our panel discussion. Thank you, Voice of Healthcare, once again. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.